This is Shred, and today I'm going to show you how to master the neoclassical sound using classical composition techniques. Don't worry, Ingve, no donuts were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> no, I don't eat donuts. I don't like fucking donuts, all right? Hostile. By learning the harmony of classical composers like Mozart, Beethoven, and Bach, we can repurpose these sounds to become a neoclassical metal riff lords. We'll be covering the harmonic minor scale, cadences, the Neapolitan chord, augmented six chords, secondary dominance, secondary diminished chords, Phrygian dominant, and more. You can score the tabs, guitar profile, and music for this lesson at my Patreon page below. I mean, way below. That's also where I keep my courses, scale Bible, secret shred pills. I mean, uh, and my chord Bible. <laughs> All you have to do is surrender your soul to me forever. Like I said, no big deal. <laughs> The foundation of the classical sound is rooted in the harmonic minor scale. The raised seventh degree creates a major five chord as opposed to a minor five chord. Now, why is this so important? The answer is because the major five chord creates a stronger resolution back to the one. Can you hear it? Once you get the harmonic minor scale under your fingers, it's time to check out the chords that are generated from these magical notes. In the key of A minor, the primary chords for the classical sound are 1, 4, and 5, or A minor, D minor, and E. These chords form the basic framework you'll need to master the neoclassical sound. The crucial part of the classical sound is the secondary dominatrix. <laughs> I mean, uh, secondary dominance. That's when you play a chord outside of the key to create tension. The most common secondary dominant is the 5 of 5. Here's what I mean. In the key of A minor, the 5 chord is E. We arrive at the five chord by counting up five notes from A. A, B, C, D, E. Find the five of five by counting up five notes from the five chord. E, F, G, A, B. So a B major chord is the five of five in the key of A minor. Use this chord to create a sense of excitement and forward momentum in your music. <coughs> Are you listening, Cardi B? Where's my WAP juice? Ugh. Neapolitan is every classical composer's favorite ice cream. <laughs> Play a Neapolitan chord by going up a half step from the root and playing a major chord. For example, in the key of A minor, the Neapolitan chord is B flat.
Usually it's played in first inversion in a minor key, but it's fine to use any other inversions as well. Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata has a killer example of the Neapolitan chord in the beginning of the piece. Here's another Neapolitan chord in Mozart's Lacrimosa. Resolve the Neapolitan by going to the 5 or 1 chord. I usually go to the 5 because it sounds more evil. <laughs> By the way, post your favorite ice cream in the comments below. Augmented six chord is a perfect way to rep that classical vibe. Here's an augmented six chord from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Now the augmented 6th chord is a dominant 7th chord built on the minor 6th scale degree of the key. <coughs> For example, in the key of A minor, the minor 6th scale degree is F. Form an F7 on that note and you've played an augmented 6th chord. Mmm, very evil. When resolving the augmented 6th chord, take the raised 6th D sharp, which is the same as E flat, the minor seventh up a half step to E. This provides the most satisfying resolution. We use a D sharp instead of E flat to indicate the resolution upwards instead of the typical downward resolution of the seventh. Now there's three types of augmented six chords, the German, Italian, and French. The German is just a regular dominant seventh chord. The French has a flat five. Very spicy. And the Italian has no fifth and usually a doubled third. All these options work great to create drama and suspense in your music. I gotta be honest with you guys, I've been withholding the true secret of what makes you a neoclassical riff lord, and that is to buy my Shred Till You're Dead shirt. As you can see, my breasts are quite large. It will instantly catapult your titty cups to size triple six. <laughs> All the power of Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart will inhabit every fiber of your being. All right, so that's not true. What else do I got? Tell you what, buy my Shred Till You're Dead shirt. All the women will swoon when they see you, and the men will want to be you. <laughs> all right, that's probably also false. Well, here's what I can say. Buy the shirt, and in your own mind, you'll think you're cool. And what is more valuable than that? Check out the link below. Do it. <laughs> Thank you.
Secondary diminished seventh chords basically gave Ingve Malmsteen a career. These chords can be placed a half step below any chord in the key, providing a killer dissonance and consonance resolution sequence. For example, the secondary diminished seventh chord of E would be a D sharp fully diminished seven. By placing this dissonant chord a half step below the target chord to resolve to, we get a satisfying sour to sweet sensation on our sonic palette. I'll be using the secondary diminished seventh chords of the seven, four, and five in my short etude. The Phrygian dominant mode is the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale and is extremely popular in metal music. In fact, it's usually one of the first scales metalheads learn. I think it's because it has that evil Spanish vibe that the Dark Lord just can't get enough of. The flat second and major third offer a delicious exotic tonality used by players like Marty Friedman and Michael Romeo. Now, of course, everybody knows the scale, but don't forget about the chords, E and F. F stands for fuck. The cadential 6-4 chord is masterfully executed by Lord Bach. I could listen to that all damn day. This chord is a one chord in second inversion, or in the key of A minor, A minor over E. It begins with a suspension and resolution sequence that can be extremely satisfying if done right, broadcasting a sense of finality in a musical phrase.
Now, here's the deal. If you can master these compositional devices, you'll be a neoclassical riff lord. Now you have proven compositional tools that you can yield to make the babes swoon and the dudes become partially aroused. Or wait, maybe I'm thinking of Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> Get the full tabs, music, and guitar profiles at my Patreon page below. I keep all of my courses there on music theory to help catapult you into instant riff lord status. Best part is, all you gotta do is let me devour your soul for the next 666 years. It's so easy. Just do it. Until next time, stay evil, my friends. <laughs>